what we're trying to do here is set ourselves up that we've got the fields which were previously filled in so that we can change those fields. Well, we've got a can ultimately we've got cancel and we've got update in those in that dialog box. Let's set up cancel first. Um, let me show you visually here what we're trying to to do visually and conceptually. I'm going to load up one of the comics on screen. <coughs> so I'm going to view comic and let's say comic ZZZ. I click on that and it pops up. Edit. Okay, so this screen here is what I'm saying. We've got then cancel and we've got then update. Let's make update work, or let's make cancel work first. What I want cancel to do is I click cancel and it'll close this window. Now we do have the built-in X close up here, sure, uh, but this is I think a little bit more user intuitive in that I'm about to update a comic or cancel. Never mind, I don't want to update the comic. So I want to make a way for pressing cancel to close this dialog box. We have seen some code already along these lines. Code to close a dialog box. We just need to link it with this HTML button. So that's an HTML element, which has an ID, which we created an object for, which needs an event listener to do the steps to actually cancel and close the screen. So back to my code. Um, in this form edit comic, uh, just to show you, in the form edit comic, uh, I have btn edit comic cancel. Earlier today, we created an object for it. Up here, when we created the edit comic prep, that's what we've been working with now. The actual form submittal is right here, but we haven't done prevent default. That's why it kicks us out of the out of the app when we try to submit or update. And here's what I'm talking about: L button edit comic cancel. We've got an object that represents that HTML node. Nothing's happening when we press cancel. So we've got the object in question. We've got it set up already. So back to the end of our code where we've got all of our event listeners. We're going to listen for a new event. We've got uh, edit comic prep. And I will deal with that cancel. So dollar L BTN edit comic cancel. That's the button that cancels this pop-up dot on method on the event of a click comma we'll run a function fn edit comic cancel So remember here, no parentheses at this point. With this syntax, if we do parentheses, the function is invoked. The function runs unexpectedly. So no parentheses here. We're setting up a way for us to be able to press the button to cancel. And it'll do its job of closing that dialog, that dialog box. We'll go back a little higher now where we've got our function definitions and we'll create a definition for function edit comic cancel so going back after function edit comic prep function 
function edit comic cancel and function edit comic cancel So basically, we need the code here that closes a dialog. We've done that once today so far when we deleted the comic. We had a pop-up on screen at that moment. And we, uh, we, did a, we, we did a delete of the comic, and we closed the pop-up currently open. So we need to reference the, the section or the screen in question, which is pop edit comic info via jQuery. That's the section in question. When a person clicks cancel, we want to close that screen. That screen was opened on the line above over here. 489, it was opened. It's off the edge of the screen here, but it was opened as a dialog. It's a dialog box. So that object's a dialog box. So we have dot dialog. Quotes close. Here the cancel button is closing the dialog box. We could set it up also with some uh, sound or vibration. Have it do a little bit of a one quarter second vibration on cancel. So um, that's for like polishing the app a little bit more, making some vibration, making some sound. Maybe for every instance of a cancel, we could run a function that is set up that does a vibration. So I'd go look up at the at the Cordova website. How do I do vibration again? Okay, I remember. And then make a function that it has that. And every time that I have a cancel action, run that function with a vibration. I'm going to check my code at this point. It should simply it should simply close when you click cancel. It should close that screen. It's up at the moment. So you see, it first opens the comic with the speech bubble. Here's the comic in question. I wanted to edit it. Okay, and never mind, I didn't want to edit it, so cancel. Should close that and take you back to either view it, delete it, edit, or close this. So that cancel didn't do anything before because it was a generic type of button. It didn't have any inherent meaning or usage. So with this function now, we've got a way to actually close it. Importantly, is that button submit? Um, I want to change those fields and press submit and do something. So let's set up our submit button for it to to really work. 
uh, to remind us here in the edit comic screen we've got the cancel button and we've got the update button it has no ID it doesn't need the ID because it's got the type submit which is attached to the whole form in general so what we need to do is listen for a submit that happens a submit event upon this form so in this case no ID necessary although it could be set up with the ID it doesn't quite behave the same way but we've done this before we've had some sort of form some sort of submit button and we have to <coughs> capture submit so we've got our form edit comic info which is an object that we've already created a little bit earlier over here when we did our batch of three we did uh, L button edit comic prep L button edit comic cancel and L form edit comic info Just changing the order of that doesn't matter but so I've got the comic prep the comic cancel and then the actual uh, editing based on the form so I have an object representing the form we need a handler then so at the end of our code L form edit comic info this time dot submit I think we can do on and then submit but we've got already submit the submit method this works upon a form because a form can be submitted this is how we also do that prevent default this is how it prevents us from being kicked out to the login screen again because the default is basically things refresh well if it refreshes it goes back to PG PG welcome the very first screen of this project so we're waiting for a submit and what we need to do is capture that event to prevent it So inside here function this is the anonymous functions syntax that we saw over here. We want to view, we wanted to view a comic, the parent of this one that we clicked on. We needed to pass in a, a an argument into the function, so we had to use the parentheses. But as I said, we don't use the parentheses usually with this syntax. If we do want to use the parentheses, we have to have the anonymous function syntax. Here it is. Because that is going to capture the event here and pass it into function form edit comic info with parentheses. So function form edit comic info parentheses and in those parentheses it's the event so that we can do event preve event prevent default we're going to submit a form we're going to capture the event object so that we can prevent default no more refresh to kick us back to the PG welcome So we need to create a definition for this function, function form edit comic info, with that uh, parameter, and then event dot prevent default.
All right, so after my last function, which was cancel, function fn, form edit comic info, parentheses, curly braces. Well, here it expects an event. It expects a parameter. And end of function form, edit comic info. Because what we can do here is event dot prevent default. Prevent that refresh. We'll do our console output that says this is this function starting, and which is our comic in question. The temp uh, temp comic to delete. Console log function form edit started. to delete. That's the comic in question. That's the comic. Uh, that's the variable uh, we're passing around uh, of the comic in question when we're uh, viewing a particular one, deleting a particular one, editing a particular one. So if we save and run this at this point, we can confirm that the screen does not refresh and does not kick us out of the app. Obviously, it's still not going to edit the data just yet. But at this point here, we're dealing with confirming that the submit button is on track. Let me check mine. I just <laughs> just want to confirm that I can get up to that point about making an edit, but then um, update doesn't actually kick me out. So it should be that when you click update, nothing happens. That's normal. It's not supposed to kick you out anymore like it did a moment ago, because I did prevent default. If you check your console, it'll just say, well, the form, uh, the, the function to edit started, and that's the comic in question. prevent default running um, I did I saw the console output of the particular comic in question based on what those input fields are okay so the workflow is that the person clicks edit all of those fields are filled in on screen the person says actually I needed to put number 12 so they change 12 they click update update then is this function so we need to check, were any of those fields changed? 
and what were those values. So those values that changed, we need to insert them back into the database. That's the whole point of this. This whole edit is it was actually number 12, not number 11. So someone changed it from 11 to 12, and they click Update. So we need to put 12 back to the database. Maybe they changed nothing. We have to deal with that. Maybe there's an empty field. Maybe there was a field and they deleted it. Maybe they didn't want that comment anymore. So there was a there was a note with something and they delete it and that's what they're changing. So in all of those possibilities, we're changing the data in the database. So we need to confirm what is in that in those boxes. We need to check again what's in those boxes in order for this for us to then reinsert into the database. The updates. So here, view comics, I click ZZZ comic, and actually I wanted to edit it, and this was, you know, Z, you can change, we'll be able to change the whole thing, Z comics number one from 1998, publisher Z comics, and notes will be great. So I could, we can change all of these things here, and then when we do the update, all of those things could change, or none of those things could change, or one of those things. Or we could remove things. I don't want anything in the notes, actually. So all of those will be, all of those need to be checked. Um, what's in those boxes to then put into the database? So in our code, in our function of edit comic info, we need to check we, and capture what's in all of those fields. That'll be the most straightforward way. So we'll create variables inside of this function to store dot our dollar val in title edit. This is going to be the value of the input field named title in our edit screen. Equals jQuery selector quotes uh, pound in title edit. And then at the end, method val. Give me the value of the input field title in the edit screen. Don't forget the ID. Store that in our variable, comma, and we'll do that for in uh, number edit, comma, in year edit, comma, etc., etc. So next line, dollar val in number. Edit is equal to selector quotes pound in number edit dot val. We'll do that several times. Each of the values of each of those fields, let's store it in our local scope um, temporary variable to then be able to do this juggling of old data out, new data in. in year edit equal to in year edit dot val. Now here's your chance to be really <coughs> artistic in your code and tab all of these over so they look nice. Publisher edit equal two quotes in publisher edit the vowel comma. Now I am chaining all of these together in one declaration of var. I'm making the variable, I'm starting the variable, and then one comma, then the next one, then the next one, etc. So uh, be careful of that. And next up after publisher is uh, note. Note or notes. Um, we call it notes, plural. So now in notes, edit equal to in notes edit 
the vowel. Barcode. And in that case, that's the last one, so I would set my call in that. And look at that. Visual Studio took away all my cool all my cool tabs. Them all lined up, and then I ended that statement, and it took away my tabs. It kept yours. Yeah. It must like you more. <laughs> there we go. All right. So I've got those vars for each of those input fields. We're going to have a cliffhanger at this point. We're going to end at this point because then the actual saving and such needs a little bit of, of more effort. Because ultimately, the cool thing about uh, PouchDB is that it can actually save different versions of your data. Your starting point, and then a second revision, and a third, and a fourth, etc. So that means we need to keep track of that. This is version 2 of our data, version 3. And it's not that complex how we keep track of it, but it's kind of built in. But it takes explanation, which I want to cover with a little bit more time. At the moment, just to confirm this is kind of working, I would do some console output to um, confirm that I'm capturing the data that I think I'm capturing. So I would say old data. put commas here actually val each one of these items in its own val output val in title edit comma dollar val so this will this will output all of these items here comma I think they go into their own new line I think they stay on the same line or new line would be nice on a new line but anyway this is the old data and I'm gonna just say each one of these that I created here so at the very least, I can see here's the data. Uh, when I click Update, it'll kick back the data already there. Or better yet, if I start to edit those boxes, it should read what you've changed. It still won't change the database. We're not there yet. But it should be able to either uh, tell you again what was already there, or if you start changing those boxes, what is now there. Val in title edit, val in number edit, comma, val in year edit. This is an example where you can break those curly braces apart just for readability. Publisher edit and val in notes edit and val in barcode edit. This is something we can test at least um, checking what's in the field, what's in the text, the text boxes.